Hi guys, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, I show you how I make this adorable little treat box. This is using Simple Stories Bloom and Grow collection and the adorable Club La La Land's monthly subscription. This is March subscription. And let me quickly show you what comes in their subscription. I also have a full video where I explain more on the subscription. I'll link that down in the description below, along with the website to Club La La Land Crafts. It's lalalandcrafts.com. And they offer a monthly subscription. And these stamps and dies are exclusive to that subscription for at least six months to a year. Plus, La La Land Crafts has tons of dies and stamps to choose from. So like I said, um, I have a video explaining more of this, but this is what comes in this month's kit. Super cute. And you can get the, the dies, just the stamps, or the entire collection. And they are the high quality deep etched rubber that is you can't beat. Um, here's the some of the adorable dies. So today I made this treat box, like I said, this is for a friend whose birthday is coming up. I matched my little Marcy with the paper collection. I added a little mixer and a bowl, this bow, these adorable hamsters, and then this whipped up just for you. And then it's a sweet little treat box um, so they can enjoy their birthday. So if you'd like to watch how this came together, stay tuned, check out the description box, and please subscribe to my channel if you have any questions. Leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned. Okay, so we have two sheets of 11 and a half by eight and a quarter. I'm using Simple Stories Bloom and Grow collection. The flower pattern is going to be the lid of my box and the gingham pattern is gonna be the bottom of my box. So put it on the 11 and a half inch side and we're going to score at one inch. And I'm scoring it very lightly. It looks in the video like I'm pressing really hard, I'm not. The second score we're going, going to do at two and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and ten and a half. Now we're going to flip our paper 90 degrees and we're going to score it at one inch, two and a quarter, and seven inches. And the entire time I'm making sure that I keep my paper right in place. We're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. Score it at one inch, two and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and ten and a half. Turn it, score it at one inch, two and a quarter, and seven inches. And here you can see all my score lines. We're going to fold into that bump, which you'll see here in just a minute. So go ahead and crease along all your score lines. I'm using a bone folder to make sure I get a good crease. I'm going to do this to both the bottom of the box right here and the top of the box as well. Now you can easily see all the score marks and we're going to use those to cut our box to make it a little bit easier to see. So again, just making sure I have a good crease. And on this box, there's going to be two sides to it. There's going to be the front of the box and the back, back of the box. This one with two folds is the front of the box. This one with one flap is going to be the back of the box. And we're attaching the back of that pattern paper, the flower pattern paper, to the back side of the bottom of the box and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense here as we go through it. So now we need to cut out our tabs. I'm going to cut up to that second score mark. Again, this is technically the front of my box and I'm cutting both of those out up to the second score mark. Now we don't need all those tabs so I'm going to cut them out. We're going to be left with one tab, so we're cutting again up to that second score mark. So we cut those three pieces out and we're left with one tab. Now I'm going to slightly angle it because when we fold up the box, we don't want any extra bulk in there. So I'm slightly angling all the pieces that we're going to be cutting, excuse me, that we're going to be folding rather. I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. So we only need one little tab left and that's going to help hold our box together. 
So I'm cutting these again at a slight angle so when we fold the box it eliminates some of the bulk. left with one tab on both sides. Again, this is technically the front of our box. As we put it all together, I hope it makes sense. So now I just, I'm just i taking a little extra out of there because I saw a little extra bulk. Now we're going to flip it over to the other side and do the exact same thing. However, we don't need any tabs left on this side. So we're going to cut both of those tabs out. And again, as I'm cutting, I'm cutting it slightly at an angle, just a tiny little angle. Cutting up to that second score mark and getting rid of those tabs altogether because that back piece where I wrote back on it, that's going to attach to the bottom of our box and that's what's going to be the hinge of our box. So I've done the exact same thing with the bottom of the box. And now we're going to fold it over and start putting our box together. Actually, before we put the box together, I lied. I'm going to put my decorative edge using the stitched bracket border die from La La Land Crafts. And this is a beautiful border. So I'm measuring the inside of my box or the lid of my box after it's all folded. And that's going to be seven by four and three quarters. And I'm going to use my centering ruler to find the center of that. You could use any die that you had from La La Land Crafts on the front of this. This gives me a really pretty border and I'm going to use that center. Um, that's a paper pierce release so it helps you release the paper from the die. I'm using that to center that. So I'm centering my ruler right at three and a half on those score marks. And then I'm using that center paper pierce to find exactly where the center of that is. And I'm going to adhere that down with some removable tape. And I left it about a half inch from the top. Now when we fold over one of the sides, that's gonna fit perfectly in our Sizzix Big Shot. So that's six inches there. So I'm just going to run that through. If this box were any larger, it wouldn't fit through the Sizzix Big Shot. So now I'm simply going to flip that around. And here's where you use the paper piercer to release those, those um, leftover pieces that are in the die. Again, using my centering ruler, I'm just going to give myself the half inch that I left it from the edge of the box. I'm going to put it right back where it's at three and a half on either side. So I know that's the center of the lid of my box. And then again, using that middle piece, I know that's the middle of the die. That's going to help me line it up. So I'm keeping it a half inch from the top. Once I get that where I want, I'm going to tape that down. And now on this time, I'm going to fold down the other side so it doesn't cut through. I don't want it to cut through both pieces. So I'm going to fold down that side and then I do need to fold one piece over, but that's not going to be in the way. It's not going to cut through that. And this way it fits right through the Sizzix die. I'm going to run that through again. And I'm going to put away my die cut machine for now. And now I'm simply going to connect the dots. You could leave it like this and use it as a handle, but I wanted it a big open bracket see through for the top of my box. So I'm just going to use my same Tim Holtz ruler. I'm going to use the metal edge and my craft knife. And here I'm showing you, I'm going to go right above those little peaks right there and basically just attach that. I'm cutting on a glass cutting mat and I'm just going to cut that off, do that on both sides and that gives me a beautiful design bracket using the stitch bracket border. And then we're going to add some clear acetate to that. So here's where we're going to start folding up our box. I'm first going to fold these two tabs down and add some glue to them. You could use whatever type of glue that you want. For this, I like using wet glue because it gives me a minute to um, move it around if I need to because you want to have a nice crease on that, the edge of your box. You want to make sure it's lined up well and then once you're happy with that, press that down. Same thing, we're going to go ahead and glue the other tab.
And once that's centered up nicely, press that down as well. Same thing on the bottom of the box, our tabs that are technically the front portion of the bottom of the box, we want to glue those as well. Line those up nicely with the corner and press them down. It'd be, it'd be a little bit quicker with tape runner, um, but I, I like the way the, the wet glue adheres. I think it holds up very well. And like I said, it does give me a minute to kind of move it around to make sure it's lined up perfectly. So now we want to fold down our box and this is what's going to reinforce the edges of our box. So we have the long side and the two short sides. I'm going to bend those two short sides out of my way so I can line that up. Again, this is technically the front part of the bottom of our box. I hope that makes sense the way I'm saying it. So fold that over and then do the two sides as well. These are reinforcing those sides. And now we're left with that back flap. I'm going to add a six and seven eighths by four and five eighths inch paper to the inside of my box. So I'm going to fold the sides on the top of the box as well. I'm going to do the long side and the two short sides, adding glue to um, the front part of our box. The part where I wrote back on it, you don't want to do that yet. We're not adhering that yet. That's going to adhere to the bottom of our box. So just simply fold those over. They're easy to fold because we've creased them earlier. And that's how the two hinges are going to adhere together. So here I'm using some Heartfelt Creations clear cardstock. You could use transparency paper. You could use leftover packaging from a stamp that you have. And I'm going to add some double-sided tape to both the inside of the box where, where the bracket is, where it curves around. I want to make sure it's adhered down well. And to my clear cardstock as well. But before I adhere it down, I cut out another piece like that center piece that is um, decorative. I'm going to lightly set it in there and trace around it. You may have wanted to do this before you added your tape or at least removed your tape backing. I didn't think about it, but it's no big deal because I didn't press it down. I'm just lightly tracing around it. And those are going to be my guides to cut out that same bracket shape. So I'm simply going to use those guides, run this through my Sizzix Big Shot, just like we did the first time, and then I'm going to cut them by connecting those two pieces using my craft knife. And that's going to give us a perfect um, pattern to go on the inside of our box to cover up that clear acetate. So now I can add in my, my clear acetate or my clear cardstock, whatever you're using, and then I can adhere down my pattern paper to give it a nice finish on the inside. So for this, I'm going to use some wet adhesive as well. And now we have a perfectly see-through box for our little treat. So here's where we're going to adjust the flap. You can glue it to the outside or the inside, depending on how you want your pattern to look. I realized here that I need to cut a piece of pattern paper to finish off that inside. So I cut that to one by seven inches using ATG tape to adhere that down. That's just going to finish off the inside of our box. And now I'm going to glue that using some wet adhesive as well. And this is how the box is going to go together. So like I said, you could put the gingham pattern on the outside if you wanted to. For this, I'm using the stitched bow die from La La Land Crafts. I love this little die and I just wanted to show you how I use my bone folder to kind of give it a, a twist or um, break up the fibers of the paper before I glue it. That just helps to give you a nice rounded bow. And then I'm going to glue those, set those aside. I will add pearls to the center and I'll just let those dry. You could use hot glue too and then they dry immediately. 
Here I'm using the curved pocket die from La La Land Crafts and I'm using this just as a label and I stamped it up, stamped it and I'm going to add that to the front of my box. It says whipped up just for you, part of the March Club La La Land Crafts. Super cute and then I'm going to add some matching gems to the outside. I'm going to use the red ones since this paper collection has a touch of red to it. And then once I get those where I want them, press those down really well. So now to decorate, I, I've already cut out my Marcy. She's adorable. I like to attach it to a piece of paper being that it is cut out. So I just have it lightly um, adhered down to a piece of cardstock. And that way, if I want to test out a color, I can um, use that background paper as my test piece. So I'm quickly going to go through the coloring. I will list all the colors here on the screen as well as over on my blog. And I'll let you finish watching this. I do like to lay down my base coat of color. And then I usually will go with my darkest color, add in my shadows, and then work back to light. And when Copic coloring, I just keep going until I'm really happy with the shading and the blending. blending. So sometimes that usually means I will do something twice, like her little apron. I believe I go over it twice until I was happy with the blending. So let me um, let you stay tuned for the coloring. Like I said, I do go through it very quickly to try and cut down on the time of the video and I'll be right back.
So now that I've finished all the coloring, I did also color the hamsters off screen. I'm just going to use some wet glue and adhere all my adorable little die cuts out. That mixer is so cute from the Club La La Land crafts. And I had to add that little gingham bow along with the cute little hamsters. And now I will add some adorable treats to the inside. Please check out the description box. Check out Club La La Land Crafts and I'll have links in the description box as well as over on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for detailed photos. Have a great day. Thank you.